Good morning everyone, I hope everybody's doing well today. Do you ever get that feeling like you wake up and you feel like you've got a hangover, even though you don't drink? That's what I'm going through right now. So forgive me if I'm not 100% at the moment, as I've only just woke, woken up. But, there are things I need to talk about. Very serious things, in fact. Have you heard of Thomas Burley? I'm probably going to, sure there's going to be some people who are going to say, no, who on earth is T Thomas Burley? Who's Thomas Burley when he's at home? Well, he's not going home. He's going to prison for nine years because he pushed a weenie bin that was set on fire up against the Migrant Hotel. He was part of the Rotherham Riots. Effectively, when those poor kids, those three kids, got murdered by a barbarian, you know, um, Radakubana, what's his face, and caused all these riots to go up because basically we've had enough of our children, oh, I don't know, getting stabbed in the face. Thomas Burley ended up pushing a, a wheelie bin on fire up to a migrant hotel. And because of that, he's been sentenced to nine years in prison. Now, let me be clear. I'm not condoning anything of what any of these violent people have done. What the real far right who hijacked the fucking protests have done. And I do not condone breaking the law, attacking the police, setting buildings on fire, setting vehicles on fire. But here's where I have beef. Well, it's actually chicken mince in the fridge. Anyway, here's where I have beef. Why is it he's getting nine years in prison, yet there are nonces, as of recently, who have been found out to be committing the most heinous crimes, that are either getting less time than that, or worse still, in one of these child rapist cases, they're getting released without jail. Make it make sense. I don't know how anybody can justify the idea of one man gets to walk free for committing some of the most atrocious crimes, yet somebody who I consider concerned about his country and the kids and who is fed up with illegal immigration is taking the matter into his own hands, is getting nine fucking years. That's like if I went out and I went and stabbed someone to death and then somebody else did the exact same thing, but because of the colour of their skin or because of the religion of peace that they follow, they only get two years in prison while I'd be looking at 20 or 30. Now, understandably, that would be quite right, because I went out and stabbed someone. But my point is, why is it that we are sentencing white working class people to the full extent of the law, or overkill on the extent of the law, yet we have people who really do deserve to be locked up for the rest of their lives, or at least for a very long time, why are they getting released either without charge or put in jail with minimal jail time. Why is that? Speaking of which, what about Ricky Jones? You know, the guy who said he was going to cut all our throats or said that we they should cut all of our throats and get rid of us. Why is it his, his thing is being postponed? His court case is being postponed until January. Why is it he's got a top lawyer paid for him, I suspect, though I cannot confirm that yet. But why is it he's got King's Counsel, one of the biggest lawyer firms, one of the most well-renowned lawyer firms in the UK working for him, under and basically getting someone who is an anti-racist lawyer. This is nothing at all to do with racism, Ricky Jones. This is to do with the fact that you incited violence and hatred against the supposed far right. 
This is not a racism matter. This is a you incited crime matter. You incited violence matter. But of course the mainstream media won't tell you this. You know the drill folks. Because say it with me. It doesn't suit the narrative. Do you think they're going to spend even five seconds talking about the real reason why Ricky Jones has been arrested and is going to be sent to court? And how funny is it that he's going to court in January, yet they can fast track ordinary working class white people in a matter of days, if not a week or two? Why is that? Why is it they couldn't come down hard on the people who attacked the Manchester Airport Police? The Muslims who went out of their way to attack the police. They get released without charge. We have people who've run over kids, dragged them through the fucking tarmac in the road for a hundred feet. And yet the guy who runs this child over and kills them. Clear of all charges. Because he said, I believe I hit a traffic cone. Really? A traffic cone? I think you'd know if it was a traffic cone, dickhead. This is why I really despair for this country right now. You can commit the most atrocious tri crimes to kids. And practically get off scot-free. Oh, but don't you dare take the law into your own hands. Don't you dare grit your teeth at the police. Don't you dare shout at a police dog. Or you'll get years in prison. Sorry, I needed to do that. <sighs> like, am I really just banging my head against a brick wall here? Am I really wasting my time with this shit? <sighs> Don't worry, I'll have a lump that's like 50 metres in front of me by now. Anyway, I am getting sick and tired of this. I think a lot of the British people are getting sick and tired of this. But maybe this is what Keir the Traitor Starmer wants. Maybe he wants to do this to push us all over the edge of that, off the edge of that cliff that sends us all into violent revolution, which, as I've said, I do not advocate for and I do not want. Ideally, I want this to end peacefully. But the way I look at it is, as I've said before, what did Adolf Hitler do when he wanted to conquer the West? He didn't pray to some god. He didn't sit around and do nothing. He didn't look up for advice from the man upstairs. He sent boots in on ground <clears throat> to conquer Poland. We told him categorically, and this is the important bit, by the way, because it's kind of similar to what Keir the Traitor Starmer is right now. We tried to tell Adolf Hitler, if you invade Poland, we're going to war. He did it anyway. We went to war and had that massive loss of life where our forefathers and our founding fathers fought in those world wars and died for us in the ultimate sacrifice to give us freedom. And yet our politicians are pissing your freedoms, your money and your rights up the wall. We have people like Keir the Traitor Starmer who are behaving akin to Adolf Hitler. Maybe not so much in the manner of, I want to conquer countries, but more rather, I'm going to do all these things that piss off the British people in the hopes that it's going to get the reaction I want so I can bring in draconian laws and we have a 1984 situation made manifest. But that's something the mainstream media, of course, are not going to tell you. But I look at Keir the Traitor Starmer in the same way I look at Adolf Hitler. Okay, Keir the Traitor Starmer may not be killing thousands, millions of Jews. But it doesn't change the fact that he is doing this with malicious intentions of killing 
hundreds of thousands of people through violent revolution. Because it's not going to be just a couple of small riots, let me tell you. If there's violent revolution, it's not just going to be a couple of towns. It's going to be the fucking country. Because they're not going to want to put up with this dictator. I mean dictator. Or maybe I was right first time. They're going to want to have his head on a spike, quite frankly. I think there are quite a few people in my local area of Norwich who would want to have his head on a spike. I can't tell you who, but I reckon there are a few people hiding away. Norwich may be a liberal town, but I can guarantee you there are at least a few people who at least are not like those Wokarati and what have you. But Keir the Traitor Starmer is doing everything he can to piss us off. And while I do accept from Paul Thorpe and Richard Inman that the ideal scenario is we need to do this peacefully, there is something I noticed in Richard Inman's last video in particular, which I'm starting to have a bit more respect for him now because he's starting to realise the situation. He said that we need to unite the kingdom, use the pledge. This is our last chance to get the country back peacefully. And he's absolutely right. This is our last chance. The last chance saloon to go in and order a drink of freedom and down it before Keir the traitor Starmer makes it an illegal substance. Because after all, he's already targeting smoking. What's stopping him from going after drugs and alcohol? It is effectively our last chance. Do I believe we've got five years for it? No. Do we have two years for it? No. Do we have one year for it? No. I think at most, I've said it in the past and we'll say it here again. I believe at most we've got like two to five or three to six months. That's it. And if we don't get it done within those six months, it all goes up just like that. Because, yes, Paul Thorpe can say all he wants that the British people are more patient than I think. But the trouble is, I think this has been a powder keg for some time. Think about it. We have asked time and time again for the same policies, for the same things from those traitorous bastards in the Houses of Parliament and 10 Downing Street. And all they've done is just lift up the rug and push it under. They've swept it under the rug. And they've said, no, nope, we're going to do what the fuck we want. Fuck the ordinary indigenous Brits. The very people they're supposed to protect and serve. And I do accept that is more of an American saying, but it doesn't change the fact that they still need to protect and serve because their main civic duties are to protect the realm and all of its inhabitants. And of course, enact the will of the British people. But we have seen it. They can't be fucked. They don't want to protect us. They want to protect the status quo. They want to protect themselves. They want to protect the idea of rejoining the EU, serving the WEF masters over yonder. Keir the traitor Starmer has not got the British people's interest in, at heart. He has already said categorically and unequivocally he will do everything he can to protect the Muslim community, which would be all well and good if the Muslim community really was just an oppressed group of people that was receiving unbridled amounts of malicious targeting. But here's the thing. Islam has proven time and time again, it's not just the snake in the grass, it's the very grass that hides the snake. It has proven time and time again, it is extremely intolerant of Western values. It doesn't want to integrate with the West, it wants to subjugate the West. It wants to throw gays off of buildings or stone them to death, it wants to treat women as second class citizens, thinks white women from other countries are basically sex slaves. And their Quran will tell them, as said before, to kill all the kafar, the kafir, the kafuffle, all the non-believers of Islam. And, of course, any apostates of Islam, i.e. people who realise how much of a dangerous ideology that this death cult that is Islam, what it really will do. And that is, namely, it'll kill anyone that goes against them. Muslims 
are fighting Christians. Muslims are fighting Hindus. Muslims are fighting other countries. Hell, Muslims are fighting other Muslims as far as that death cult ideology is concerned. Which is something, of course, the mainstream media will not tell you. And they wonder why we're pissed off when we see Keir the traitor Starmer taking sides. When he's deciding to protect a religion rather than a country. Us, the indigenous people of Great Britain. He is making Great Britain feel not so great to live in. Why do you think you see investors, why do you think you see ordinary people deciding to pack their bags and fuck off to another country? <clears throat> I'll tell you why. It's because they don't want to be in a shithole like this. Or I say shithole loosely, I say it in the context of they're turning this place into a third world shithole and they're making this place all but uninhabitable because of the amount of illegal immigrants and a lot of Muslims that they are bringing in from Middle Eastern countries and the East. They don't want to be part of a country that's going down the toilet where they have no prospects and they have no chance of being able to make anything work. That's why they're all leaving. They're not leaving because they're all racist or far right or some other spiel that the mainstream Gestapo media will try to bring up. No, it's all down to what our country's establishment is doing. They are doing everything they can to screw us over. And frankly, I'm sick of it. This is why... I say we've got three to six months at most, because I don't think the Brits are going to have the patience to wait another fucking five years for this shit. I sure don't. I don't have the patience to wait five years. Not after what that dick taster has done. A man who is willing to let child rapists off with nothing more than sometimes not even a slap on the wrist. Just letting them, letting them go free of charge. Letting the violent Muslim attackers of the police go free of charge. Letting somebody who kills a child go free of charge. But if you shower a police dog, you'll get years in prison. If you try to torch the hotels that are housing the migrants that have no legal or human right to be here, you'll get nine years in prison. Thomas Burley. Poor bastard. I mean, okay, he he does deserve to go to jail. But for nine fucking years, I think that's a stretch, quite frankly. But what do I know? What do I know? But what I can tell you is that I do want to be behind Richard Inman, Paul Thorpe, Martuzzi, all those people. But I don't think... They understand what little time we have. I don't think they realise that time is not on our side. Like I said, I think we've got about three to six months at best now. And if it doesn't work by then, then we'll have no other alternative. I don't want it to happen. But I don't think the British people are going to want their country to fall to the hands of these dick tasters and traitors who sit in their houses of treachery, in their seats of power, yearning for more money and power. I think they're going to want to take out the trash, metaphorically speaking. They're going to want to remove the people from their seats and have them sent to jail for their crimes against humanity, for violating our human rights, and in particular for Keir the traitor Starmer, treason and sectarianism. Because at the end of the day, when you decide you're going to protect one religion over your entire populace of people, that makes you a sectarianist bastard. I've said it many times, and I'm not going to stop saying it, because that is what Keir the Traitor Starmer is. He is a sectarianist fascist bastard, because he wants to silence his political opponents. There is one thing I'll say, though, that I do agree with, with Richard Inman. He is right on one thing. 
we need to stop our in-house squabbling. Because as the old saying goes, united we stand, divided we fall. It's either we come together as many, or we all fall as one. That's the way I look at it. Any petty grudges that you have against people, put them to one side. Open your drawer up, put your petty squabbles in the fucking drawer, and close it. Put them to one side for the time being. This is far too important. Over these next three to six months is going to determine whether the United Kingdom lives or dies. It's as simple as that. We need to stop going after... We need to stop being at each other's throats on the supposed far right that Keir the traitor Starmer would brand us as. Well, we all know we're not just right. Oh, sorry, we're not just far right. We're right so far. But we need to stop the in-house squabbling. We need to stop being childish about it. We need to stop being pathetic and being like, oh, well, if he's going, I'm not. I have things I disagree upon with Richard Inman. Does that make me not want to go to these protests? No, it doesn't. Because at the end of the day, it's far more important than the basis of one man or even five men. This is what we need to do. We need to come together, put differences aside. We may not like each other in some cases. That's fine. You're entitled to do that. But don't make it manifest in the protests. Put the differences to one side. And then once we've taken back this country from the houses of treachery, I mean Parliament, or maybe I was right again first time. Once we take our country back from the traitors in our Houses of Parliament, then, and only then, can you start going at each other's throats again. Because if we let this country fall, we won't have a plan B. We don't have a plan B right now. It's either we go in and we take the country back, or the country dies. It's as simple as that. So I do agree with Richard Inman that we need to put petty squabbles aside and we need to start holding our protests. We need to make sure that we are doing this with a clear conscience, putting any malice towards one another aside, and we need to go in there at full strength. We cannot half heart this. We cannot go half-hearted into this one. We need to go into this fight like we are fighting for our very lives. Because I guarantee you, Keir the traitor Starmer will do everything he can to discredit this movement. Whether it's libelously slandering us as far right, whether it's getting the police to agitate us, whether it's getting the dogs to attack us, whether it's bringing the horse guard police in, whether it's putting agitators in our group, he will pull out every dirty, unscrupulous tactic in the book for us. And for that, we cannot be at half strength. We can't even be at three quarters strength. We need to be at full strength. Or this is pointless. That's the way I look at it. As I said, we've got about three to six months to make this work at most. After that, we descend into anarchy. That's the way I look at things. And I don't know about you, but like I said, last time I checked, government should be fearing their people, not the other way round. And the way I look at it, is we need to fight for this fucking hard. Ignore the NPCs waving about their factory manufactured placards of stand up to racism and Islamophobia out and all that shit when they're the ones projecting as if they learnt from a Chinese grandmaster the art of projection 
even though it's not a Chinese art. But we need to be ready to ignore the trash out there because they're the real NPCs who are not going to make any difference in this world. They think they are. The media would like to portray them as they are, combating the far right. But they're merely NPCs who project their problems onto us. They say smash fascism. Who's the real fascist here? Here the traitor Starmer is, because he's the one taking political prisoners to silence his political opponents, which, again, the mainstream media are not going to tell you. If you really want to smash fascism, you left-wing NPCs, why don't you take a look at your own lot, hmm? Why don't you take a look at your own lot and the smash racism and all that shit? What about the people in your group who are flying the Plasticine flag? Or, oh, sorry, Palestine flag. What about the people in your group who are supporting Hamas, supporting Palestine, supporting the genocide of Jews? You want to support anti-Semitism? That's what I thought as well. Nothing but a bunch of paid fucking NPCs. The lot of you. A bunch of spineless fucking Got uh, cowards. I was going to say dogs, but my words failed me there. Spineless fucking cowards. The lot of you. You don't have the balls in you. At least I've got a pair of balls. In fact, I've got two pair of balls. Up here and down there. I've got the balls to say it how it is. I'm not going to mince my words. I'm not going to sugarcoat a motherfucking thing. And I'm going to say it exactly how it is. And you lot are a fucking rent -a mob full of NPCs who put money over personal principles. You're no better than Keir the Traitor Starmer. And you know what Islam thinks of Keir the Traitor Starmer? They see him as a useful idiot. They also see you renter mobs as a bunch of useful fucking idiots. That's it. And I don't know about you, but if I found that out and I was in your mob, and I found out Islam were treating me like a fucking mug... I tell you what, we'd be having some fucking problems. We'd be having some big fucking problems. And they would be the ones on the floor. I may not look tough, but I'll sure give it my all. At the end of the day, the bottom line is this. Here the traitor Starmer needs to be removed from power. He needs to be impeached. He needs to be imprisoned and he needs to be removed from the political spectrum. He needs to lose his, his ability to have a job in politics, just like the Labour Party goons do. Because they are effectively violating our human rights in favour of protecting the enemies who are clambering at the walls and the gates. Keir the traitor Starmer is the one who's literally holding up the portcullis while the foreign invaders come in. We need to deal with this. And we're not going to deal with this at half strength. We're not going to deal with this with petty grudges at our side. We're not going to be dealing with this if we go into this half-hearted. We need to conform. We need to mobilise, we need to come together, we need to form the pledge, form an alliance, and we need to fight against this establishment. This is the last chance saloon, the way I look at it. We have no plan B. And if this goes south, there won't be a country left to save. That's the way I look at it. So let's put differences aside. Keep yourselves updated when the next protest is going to be. Hopefully it will be a Saturday so I could potentially come along as well. But we need to make sure that we're ready to take out the trash. Because if we do not take out this trash and we do not fight with everything we have, we will lose this country to a bunch of dick tasters who would rather serve themselves and Islam than serve its own people and save its own country.